Hey divas and dudes, I've got a wonderful surprise for you today. Something that I think you're gonna absolutely love and it's so easy to prepare. Um, and when you wanna get your kids or your grandkids involved in doing something healthy, this recipe is raw, so no cooking at all. It happens to be vegan. It happens to be no sugar and no salt and no fat. How cool is that? So now you're questioning, okay, what in the heck is it? Is it possibly gonna be any good? And I hope that you'll be pleasantly surprised. When I started Powerhouse Bakery, I made a product that was for my athletes. And um, I wanted to come up with something that was loaded with minerals because we know athletes um, are going to sweat a lot. And so we need potassium and magnesium and calcium uh, to replace the lost minerals. Um, just like, you know, when we're out in these really hot days and you want to get some stuff done, maybe even take a walk or do some exercise and you're heavily sweating, we got to make sure we replace your electrolytes. So athlete or weekend warrior, we got to make sure those nutrients are covered. And we want to do something that doesn't heat up the, the oven or your house for sure. And so this one's a really fun recipe. And while I'm going to show you some specifics, know that I'm always going to give you ideas on how to mix and match and trade things out because because you don't want to have to go to H-E-B and get uh, groceries, chances are you'll have some of these already in your pantry. Not to mention your pantry. Your pantry should already be loaded with some super healthy powerhouse ingredients, right? So I'm going to make you a list right now of things I want you to always have on your shopping list when you go to H-E-B. So when you want to whip up some powerhouse bars, you can do that, okay? So we know for sure in the ingredient list of our pantry, we want to have some things that are going to last a long time. They're going to be easy to travel. They're going to be loaded with healthy fats and proteins and minerals. Bam, you guessed it, nuts, okay? So make sure you have some nuts already in your pantry. Number two, similar to nuts, they're little, they're power packed, and they're powerhouse food. Guess what it might be? You're right, seeds. So there's a lot of nutrients in the seeds and there's a lot of different kinds to pick from. There's pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, even pine nuts kind of fall in that category because they're little, um, but there's so many. And now the most popular ones are kind of uh, in the health food section, but they've been around for millennia, and that's chia seeds, and there's hemp hearts too. And so if you haven't seen hemp hearts, I want you to take a good look. These are absolutely gorgeous, and they're so easy to use. So I want you to always have some in your pantry, ready to go when you have kind of a wild hair and you want to do something yummy. Here is a picture, um, this is what the chia seeds look like. Again, you can get golden chia seeds or the black. They're gonna be the same nutrition. If you can get them in the bulk section, you're gonna pay a lot less for them. So look for chia seeds. So in our pantry, we've got some seeds and nuts, always. How are you gonna store them? Airtight container. You can use a jar like I have here that I put my nutmeg in. Lots of great options. So make sure you get some nuts, bulk section, put them in a jar, glass if possible. What else do we want to make sure we always have in your pantry? Well, I recommend oats. Oats are a fantastic grain because they last forever and you can do so many things with them. You're going to see today that um, they easily work into lots of different recipes. You can cook them. Don't worry about doing overnight oats. That's kind of a thing right now, but all you have to do is add some hot water to any oats, whether they're thick cut, instant, or even the, um, the steel cut. Hot water, put a uh, plastic wrap over it, let it sit for five minutes, you're done. You don't have to do it the night before. So don't let it be a deal breaker. I don't have time for breakfast because I didn't have any overnight oats. No, just grab any oats. Even the, the instant or the quick cook, the HEB brand or the Quaker oats or the Bob's Red Mill, all of those are just fine. They do not have to be only steel cut oats. Those particular ones do take longer to soak up the moisture, but they still work great. So oats are a great thing to always have in your pantry. Now, if you need to be gluten-free, um, you can still have flour in your pantry. You can get, um, now HEB has a really good quality organic wheat flour, and what I think is so good is a flour blend. So it's a multi-grain flour blend. Have it in, they have beautiful bags of it, so not too much. They have a zip seal, so they're going to last really well. Um, if you feel like your pantry is moist, sure, put it in the refrigerator. But for the most part, always have some organic flour available. Um, if you're wanting to be gluten-free, 
there's an easy option there too. If you want a specialty blend, come to Powerhouse, I'll set you up. But you can also go to HEB and get cassava flour. That's almost a one-to-one -one exchange, meaning it works the same as your basic wheat flour, albeit a little exceptions. Um, the texture won't be exact, but it'll be close. Uh, so cassava is a great one, and now there's so many gluten-free blends that you know you always want to have some flour handy. The other one I love to always have available is cornmeal. Just because it's so easy to whip up some cornbread muffins. Um, and I'll show you that in one of my next videos because I did that this weekend and I was totally thinking of all my viewers out there thinking, I bet they would so dig having little mini cornbread muffins. So coming up, I promise. But just keep in mind that always in your pantry, you're also going to have room for some savory dishes. And while I'm not going to cover them today, I wanted to finish your thought process um, on what we want to have in our pantry. So canned or dried beans, super important, always have in your pantry um, because they can go so far in making a healthy meal that's plant-based. Um, you can certainly have pastas in your fridge, as, uh, in your pantry as well, and you can store them in your fridge if you feel like you need to if they're not a wheat base. So take good notes. I want to see all these items as a standard on your grocery list. And now let's get started on a really fun, no-bake vegan little trail muncher. And again, I kind of love this idea because it's so similar to one that I'm already cooking here at Powerhouse Bakery. But I gotta say, this one takes it a one step better because it's not cooked. What we do is we use the spoon processor, which I love this little thing. I bought it at HGV. Uh, it's so handy. It's a perfect size for your counter easy to put things in, uh, and as soon as you lock the lid in place, you have it on, all you do is press, and it works so well. The blade is really easy to work with this, um, too, and so it's really just taking it out, it's two parts, the, the bowl and the blade, put them together and just store it on your countertop so you'll have, uh, have it ready to go. So let's get started. This little recipe is one that I took right from this new website that I'm loving. Super cool. So Colin Campbell's Center for Nutrition Studies is um, an area where I'm learning a ton from and um, I'm working on getting a certification so I can really just nail down lots of details for you so I can be a better um, resource. And what I love about this one is the simple ingredients. So it's going to call for pecans, pumpkin seeds, dried dates, currants, some vanilla, some pumpkin pie spice, and a little dash of salt. So I'm close with all my ingredients. Again, I could have brought in sound dates, but I'm really a believer that plums, or AKA prunes, are even more nutrient rich and a little less sweet from the dates. And let's face it, everybody uses dates. Let's get a little more creative, right? So I'm gonna start with my processor. It calls for one cup. And it's gonna make a, about, oh, I'd say enough for 12 servings. But again, that's, that term serving is so subjective, right? Serving based on who, who's serving, right? So it's gonna give us about half a pan. So I'm gonna show you when I cut our, our completed one so you can kind of see how much it is. But let's face it, things like this are easy to double, but start with the single base, make sure you like it, and then you can always make it again and then double it. So here I'm starting with my ingredients. So the food processor on this recipe is gonna do all the work. I'm gonna start with the, the plums and I'm gonna add in my nuts. Um, because it's gonna make it a really interesting base, I'm gonna um, be able to add in some that will be finely chopped and some that will be left whole. That way it'll give a really nice texture. So the recipe calls for a one-to-one -one ratio, so meaning the same amount of the pecans, pumpkin seeds, and the dates, or what I'm gonna use as prunes. Um, this is pretty small, so it's not gonna all fit. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of each of these in my food processor, and I'm gonna leave the pecans whole, because again, I want it to be kind of chunky. It gives it lots of beautiful texture. So that's about as full as I want. And I'm just gonna process it till it gets almost complete. there. Look how pretty that is. Very close. And I didn't add any sweetness. All I did was add in the fruits. So now I'm going to pour this into my bowl so you can kind of see how pretty it is. It's not quite done. I don't have all the ingredients in yet. But it already has beautiful texture, right? So pretty. It's got nice 
moisture, it's very dense, and so when I put it into my pan, it's going to be easy to mold into place. So let me do my one more half. Snaps into place, and I'm going to do my other half of the pecans. Now in this batch, I'm going to go ahead and add in my extra flavors. My other half of pumpkin seeds, and in this one also the cherries. So the recipe called for currants. Again, currants are okay, but I'm all about going for the most nutrient-rich fruits and nuts, and anytime we can use cherries, I love them. Now some people might think they're a little too sour, which I get, they are kind of sour. So what would be another option? You could certainly use dried blueberries, or you could do raisins. Great option, and you know, anytime you decide to do those changes, um, as long as you keep it about the same ratio, your recipe will come out just fine. So now I'm also going to veer from the recipe because you know me, I always want to add in more nutrition. So I'm going to add in a tablespoon of my hemp hearts because you always have them in your pantry. And I'm going to add some of my super blend of cinnamon, cardamom, a little bit of allspice, and nutmeg. And now, only if you could smell how good it's going to be. Alright, it's ready. Now I can also add a little bit of citrus. I can add a little bit of, it adds, it calls for vanilla extract, and to me, I don't think it needs vanilla extract. If I was going to use dates and currants, it might. So again, you can absolutely use extracts. Um, you could also use uh, essential oils. You know me, I, I love using essential oils because they are very concentrated and they have such a wonderful aroma. But in this one, I kind of like the part of this. So I'm going to add my zest and I'm going to add the juice of a lemon. Add a little bit more in there. Make sure you don't get seeds. So I'm just going to fold that so they don't come out. Oops, look at that, I got one in. No worries. Seeds out. There we go. All right. And we'll do a little bit of zest. Orange would also be fabulous to add this, add into this one. So if you have um, maybe a tangerine or even just a small orange, squeeze that juice in. Oh my gosh, that extra flavor would just be amazing. So yeah, I could easily put all this extra into my other half over here. So again, it doesn't really have to go into the processor, but I do want to make sure they get well mixed. Here we go, one more good spin. And I think it's ready. So look how pretty that is. Now I'm just going to spend a little time pressing it into my pan. So the recipe itself had called for uh, like an eight by eight square, which is very close to this one. This one actually might be a tiny bit smaller, but again, it doesn't really matter. I mean, these kinds of recipes are so forgiving. If you don't have the exact size, you can go a little bit smaller and it will be a thicker bar, a little bit flatter, and it could be a granola. Um, so the trick is to get ingredients and flavors that you're excited about. And you can always improvise if you need to. So this batch, of course, had the cherries in it. And I'm going to mix it with the other half that just had a little bit more of the plums. And I'm just going to massage it together uh, just with my hands and make sure I get all the flavors well mixed. And also what I love is, notice the pumpkin seeds are giving me some good texture. If you over grind it, it, it becomes more um, uh, fine and you can't really see the nuts. Now if you want that texture, that works too. You'll just have to probably add a little more liquid. But this one I left pretty chunky. Um, and even at this stage, I could add some coconut. In fact, I think I'm going to. That sounds really good. And I, I specifically chose a little fatter pan uh, because I wanted it to come out like a bar. So I'm going to press it in. And again, using your hands, you could also use a gloved hand or you could uh, just use a baggie that you put your hand in and it works out just great. I have a little uh, damp paper towel here, so in case it gets too sticky, I can just add a little bit of moisture, and then it doesn't stick to my hands. So I'm going to get it nice and flat, and 
then I'm going to add what I was just thinking would be great. is a little unsweetened coconut. It'll give it a really pretty look on the top. So this reminds me of the Lara bar. So right, this little lady wants smart cookie. She was making bars just like this, and just at the peak of her company, she sold it, a cool four million. And now she's still got her name on all those bars. She gets to give everybody a little health tip here and there, and she's probably living, living in the Bahamas somewhere. So she's a smart lady. Anyway, this is good to go. Doesn't that look so pretty? And I've got that little bit of parchment that's gonna allow me to pull it right up after it's chilled. So let me show you the one I've already made. So here's the one that I made earlier, and I chilled it down. So notice I didn't put the coconut on it. Like I said, I just had that, that idea. But look how nice it comes out. It's this beautiful little flat bar, and I can cut it and serve it into the squares, and we can do all kinds of cool things with it. Let me show you. So we can use it as a snack bar, or we can use it as a granola. Now, one thing I don't like about traditional bars is they kind of force you to eat the whole bar, right? This is nice because now I can, I can put it in squares. And that's something I did with the Parker bars is I said, well, wait a minute, who says it has to be a two by four inch bar? And that kind of forces you to eat a certain number of calories. And again, while we're not too um, married to numbers, we do want to have a nice healthy snack that's uh, going to have ample for our height. And so these work out great as little squares that I can put into a baggie and put on the back of my bike or into my yogurt and have it as a snack. So they turn out so pretty, right? Now if I do them a little fatter, um, it's just going to mean that I have um, a denser bar to cut. But this one is a really nice one. See how the thinner spots are coming apart? And I can crumble that and put it on my granola and it will be amazing but super easy and of course loaded with nutrition and no sugars. And one thing I wanted to mention too here at the end is um, a healthy diet doesn't mean we have to take all sugars out. It also doesn't mean we have to take all fats out. What we do want to do is find a way to get the very best choices. And so using sugars that are naturally occurring in plums and in cherries are a great way to go. If we were to look at the nutrition facts information um, and see cherries, and it would have 14 grams of sugar in um, a serving of a um, quarter cup, that sounds like a lot, right? And then that might be a, a deal breaker if somebody's kind of committed to eating zero grams of sugar. The trick though is that when we eat fruits that are loaded with minerals and antioxidants, those grams of sugar become much less important. It's a whole different ball game to compare the sugars that come from natural ingredients like cherries and plums than refined white sugar. Um, when I look at the ingredients here are the nutrition facts of the plums, it has total sugars of 13. Um, one thing that's confusing the nutrition world right now is um, how do we quantify whether those sugar grams are healthy or not? because most people would look at that and feel like, well, that must be a bad thing to eat. So if you are fighting cancer and you're trying to cut out all sugars, the main thing you wanna cut out is any refined white sugars because while it does have sweetness, it does not have any nutrient power. So yes, we wanna decrease the total amount of sugars we get, but every time you pick a sugar, as long as you pick one that's got fiber and minerals in it, you're doing okay. And then when you can create a great little snack that is loaded with other flavors and other textures and full of the macronutrients, that's a double plus good. And so when you are thinking about doing a snack and you want to make sure you get lots of nutrition, we always want to look at low sugar. We want to look at no refined sugar. So if, if we're picking something to sweeten with, using something like berries is a great way to go.
dried blueberries. Um, of course, currants and raisins are also great. The nice thing too is when they go through the drying process, they do increase their nutrition. Um, it's a concentrated form, so you can get a little more iron, a little more calcium, just because of that drying process. Um, a little side note though, make sure that if you do eat dried fruits, like what is in my cute little bars, they do stick to your teeth. So make sure you brush really well so you don't get any cavities. That would be terrible, especially for your grandkids too. So we want to make sure that we do have sweeteners that are loaded with nutrition. Anytime we pick um, a blend of nutrients, so when we have a bar that's loaded with minerals and protein and fiber, you also get the benefit of the slow absorption of those sugars. Don't get confused about glycemic index. Instead, think about what sugars you're choosing and the company that those sugars keep. So whenever you have a craving for something yummy, combine nuts and seeds and a little bit of dried fruit and don't forget your chia seeds and your hemp hearts and you will be on the road for lots of action and good recovery. So thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you soon at Powerhouse Bakery.